A stretch to say that the tone of this year's CDF is just a bit awkward. Yeah, it is a bit awkward. Obviously, we've had three straight years of COVID zero policies. We've had rising uh, trade tensions between China and the United States through the Trump administration into the Biden administration. And now with the war in Ukraine and Xi Jinping just coming back from Moscow, where he shared time, obviously, with Vladimir Putin. It all makes very difficult and awkward positions for a particular U.S. executives who are going to China and then meeting with Chinese officials uh, and some top U.S. Uh, executives. Executives, perhaps, uh, according to sources, opting out of the high-profile, usually high-profile, China Development Forum at the Daoyutai State Guest House in Beijing. This time, even though this is the first time in three years that it is fully in-person meeting, I think a lot of people keeping a low profile. Tim Cook, though, he not taking a low-profile approach. We also had Steve Schwartzman, uh, as well as Ray Dalio, Albert Borla of uh, Pfizer. Uh, they are all on the preliminary list of uh, participants. Participants. Uh, but, you know, Tim Cook essentially, as you said, uh, stressing the sort of symbiotic relationship that Apple has had with China over the last several decades. And let's face it, it has been sort of symbiotic relationship. Almost all of Apple's products are made in China, as well as, you know, they, they kind of rose together over the last few decades. But those strains of relations are already starting to show. We've seen, you know, Foxconn, which makes a lot of the products in iPhone City and Zhengzhou. They're starting to move some of that production out of China. They've launched a, or they've announced a $700 million plant in India. Other iPhone or Apple product makers in China saying they're looking at diversifying their supply chain and their capacity outside of China. So when that giant oil tanker starts changing course, it's hard to move it back in that direction. So three years was a long time, but the strain on the U.S.-China relationship has been going for longer than those just three years. We did get Vice Premier Ding Xue Xiang uh, speaking at the China Development Forum over this weekend. In remarks yesterday, he said that open Opening up is a national policy. It is a mark of modern China. He also read a statement from President Xi Jinping essentially saying the same thing. But again, the vice premier spoke at the China Development Forum, not the premier and not the president. Steve, there's a lot of reasons why we're seeing this Beijing-Washington relationship fray, right? Does that mean we see that Xi Biden phone call being pushed back? I think for all the reasons I just outlined, that's the reason for the delay in the call. The U.S., according to sources at telling Bloomberg News, has been urging a call now that the National People's Congress, the annual session of Parliament, has ended. Also, Xi Jinping is back from Moscow. Perhaps mid-March was the target time for them to have another call. They have not talked or met in person since that summit, if you want to call it that. It wasn't an official summit, but that meeting on the sidelines of the G20 in Bali, that was last November, so they have not necessarily spoken, and the tensions and the rhetoric has escalated. But we're hearing from sources that China has rebuffed all those overtures for a call. I guess we need to work through a lot of these um, difficulties on the geopolitical front. We saw Xi Jinping in Moscow. He pretty much laid out his diplomatic priorities, and that is, at least right now, arm in arm with Vladimir Putin, that doesn't play well in a conversation with Joe Biden, obviously. We'll have to see when they're going to talk again.